Welcome back McFly subscribers. So this is what we're going to be tying today. It's called a green weenie. It's super simple and easy to tie. So let's get to it. And we'll place the hook in our vise with a slotted tungsten bead. And today I'm tying this in a jig. You could tie this on a regular hook with a bead. You could tie it without a bead. Up to you. Anyway, the hook I'm using today is Risen's Barbless Jig Hook 9230. Okay, in size 14. And the bead I'm using is Risen's Tungsten Slotted Bead. This is a matte black. You could tie any other color. Um, I'm using three millimeter. You could tie it a little larger, by the way. So, so here's one I tied with a little bit larger bead. This is a three and a half millimeter. Also, you could go a larger hook as well. I mean, tie this however you want. I've seen this tied much larger. If you go too large though, you'll wanna go with um, something like a standard size instead of the micro chenille, by the way, and we'll get to that in a second. You could use any color bead if you want. Go with silver or gold like this or whatever. Make sure though, if it's a jig hook, you're using a slotted bead. All right, the thread I'm using today is Vivas 6 Ot in chartreuse. Now it's called a green weenie. I think it, they're almost all tied in chartreuse, but I'm sure you guys could tie it in whatever color you want. I think it's supposed to look like an inchworm, but I mean, I don't think fish are all that picky, so. There, even if there's not inchworms in your water, I'm sure it'll work. And you bring it down to just past the bend of the hook here, and then we're gonna come all the way back up. It doesn't have to be touching wraps at this point. We're just kind of bringing it up to right at the head. And we're gonna paint just a little brush of super glue on there to hold everything. Then we're gonna cut off a piece of this super chenille. This is the micro size, okay, so it's it's small. And by the way, they call it Super Chenille. Um, I think, I'm forgetting the name of it from the other brands. Um, this is from Fly Tires Dungeon. It's a little less expensive and it works just fine. It's the same thing. They call it something else. I'm forgetting Ultra Chenille, I wanna say, from the other brands. And then I like to counterclockwise wrap my bobbin here. So it brings out all the, the kink in it. And that way when I come back over, it's gonna jump rearward as you can see. All right, so I'm not gonna miss all right, so then I just capture it like that. Make sure it's staying right on top. And then we're gonna bring back all the way down into slightly into the bend of that hook there, like so, about where we had stopped with the thread before. And then we're gonna make a tight wrap, and wrap one more. Then we're gonna pull this up over. We're gonna pinch then make a pinch wrap and we can lift this and make sure it's nice and even on top we want to make sure that this isn't twisted and that it's resting straight i mean it's still going to fish if you 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 have it twisted it really doesn't matter i don't think fish really care all that much but just for aesthetics purposes and then we're going to make a tight pull here do one more wrap another tight pull we're going to pull this rearward and make a wrap over it or a wrap in front of it and then wrap back over it once more then we're going to pull this back and bring your thread all the way up to the right behind the bead all right now we're going to wrap down and we're going to wrap this up the hook shank with touching wraps but first i want to pinch here to make sure nothing moves and i'm going to pull tight and then I'm going to make a wrap and I'm going to do the same. I'm going to pinch and pull really tight. All right. Now we can just make wraps up three, four, five. And I'm noticing with this, this hook, I want six. Okay. So make one final wrap there and I'm just going to hold the bead here and pull real tight. Make sure that locks in there and then wrap under it and then over it, under it, over it. And that should lock that into place. And we're gonna take some fine point scissors, cut that off real close. By the way, these are mitten scissors by Risen Fly. I really love them. They're my favorite scissors. I talk about them all the time, but I really love these scissors. And they're sharp enough and strong enough to be able to cut heavy chenille like this, but one of the finest point scissors out there and they get in real tight if you need. Great for fine hackle and stuff. All right, so we're gonna wrap over that, clean up that head a little bit, and then we're simply gonna whip finish the fly. Four turn whip finish is fine. We're gonna seat that knot, pull it up, 
and I'm gonna seat this on top like so. Cut that off real close. Now, some people will make a collar with some dubbing right there, which you can do if you want. Totally fine, up to you. I don't think it's necessary. Now, if you wanted to add some like flashy dubbing, use like ice dub, something like that. Next, we've got to cement the head. And today I'm gonna to use Solarez Bone Dry. It's got a nice little handy paintbrush in it. Makes it super easy. But I don't wanna paint the, the bead because that bead is a matte finish. And then I'll show you what happens if you paint it. So I'm gonna make sure I'm real careful and just painting around like that. And that's why I seated the knot right on top to make sure that I was able to cement the knot. It's kind of hard with these jig hooks to get up underneath. There we go. And here you can see what happens if you accidentally get that on the, the matte finish. It becomes not matte. <laughs> become shiny, which isn't bad. I mean, I think that looks good too. Kind of two-tone, but you know, do your best not to if, if, if you want to keep that matte finish. But again, you might not be using these beads. If you have like a shiny bead, it won't matter. You won't even notice it. But there we go. There is the green weenie. You know, I probably could have come back just slightly more into the bend here. And that would have kind of kept that from stepping up there. It would have been a little more smooth, kind of like that one. One did a little better. I came down a little further into the bend. So that's something to keep in mind. I, I wasn't paying attention. It's hard to film and tie at the same time, but you guys get the idea on how to tie that. I mean, like I said, it is super simple. I've never really tied a fly this simple or easy. I guess maybe a San Juan worm would be about the same, but this works really well. I mean, I'm tying it for sunfish in my area, but a lot of people say trout love this. I'm sure a little bit larger bass would love it. It's chenille, <laughs> you know? Chenille flies work really well. So, and like I said, it's super easy, super simple to tie. It's pretty neat. And I'm sure, again, you could tie this. I mean, chenille comes in any color under the rainbow. So get creative and tie it however you want. I'm sure a red one would work really well as well. If you haven't already, please check out my sponsor, Risen Fly. They made the hooks I'm using today. They also made the bead. By the way, their tungsten beads are some of the best priced out there. I mean, it's amazing. And they've got quite a few different cool colors to choose from. Of course, you got the normals like the golds and silvers, but they've got some really cool stuff. And they're really high quality beads, guys. I mean, not only are they good quality, but they're really good price. I mean, I think you can get a pack for like 450, five bucks, somewhere around there. And it depends on the size, of course, but you know, that's for 25 of them, which is unheard of for tungsten beads. I think they go up a little bit on the larger sizes. Tungsten's very expensive. Um, now there are some brands out there that have them right around that price, maybe a little less, but they're junk. I mean, the uh, different eye sizes and whatnot, every single one of these has come out looking great, um, that I've used from Risen Fly. So I love them. I think they're great. I mean, for the money, they're hard to beat. I, I don't think that there's a better priced bead out there for quality beads. So definitely check them out if you're looking for beads. They also sell rods and reels and just about anything else you need to fly fish. Best off, they're offering you all a discount, which is on top of their amazing prices already. So type in McFly at checkout when you go to www.risenfly.com and you'll get 15% off of your first order with them. And this will bring one of their fly rods down to just around $100, just slightly over, which makes it one of the best priced rods out there for a good rod. I mean, it's really amazing. So definitely check them out. Like I said, they sell rods, reels, amazing hooks and beads. Um, one of the best places out there, I think, for quality stuff at a good price. So if you like this kind of content, please subscribe and hit that bell notification for future video updates. Also, if you could hit the like button, it would really help me and the channel out. And I will see you on the next video. Now you go catch some fish.